Welcome to the show, guys. We are talking about three rookie running backs I love for Fantasy Football 2022. Yes, exciting show. And I'm also going to explain the details, the scenario they're in, their projected outlook, and a deep dive into these three rookie running backs. Backs. Exciting show. A lot of people want to know about them. Guys like Brees Hall, you want to know, should you draft them, should you not? I'm going to dive into the details right now here for you. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys click subscribe. This is outside of the box thinking. This is not general consensus stuff. This is going to help you guys crush your leagues. Last year, I give you a quick example. I only use this as one example, but there's a ton more examples. Najee Harris was outside the top 10 on all of the rankings last year. I had him in the top 10. He finished third in PPR amongst running backs. Everyone slept on him, right? This channel helps you think so, think outside the box so you can crush it. So if you are new to the channel, if you're just coming into this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Join the line mentality, okay? Free to subscribe. Now, I also got the 16-round draft, so you make sure you guys click on the link here below if you're on YouTube or head on over to thefantasyfootballcouncil.com or simply Google 16-round draft solution. This will help you guys crush your leagues. I guarantee it. It works. I've got testimonials. It all works. Listen. Optimal players drafting each round, sleepers, breakouts, video training, cheat sheet. Everything is there. Updated notes until the season starts on all the players to draft. Sleepers, breakout. I'll give you some dynasty rankings as well. Everything in the 16-round draft. You should go get it right now. Use promo code TUBE20 to save yourself 20%. All right, guys? Let's dive into these three running backs. Smash thumbs up. And in the comments below, love to make this interactive. Dive in, guys. Have some fun here on YouTube. Let me know which rookies do you like. Do you like James Cook? I didn't include him in here. Love to hear your feedback. I want to know which rookie running backs you guys like, all right? Now, things are going to change probably as, you know, we head closer to the season. So, as the way the depth charts sit right now, I like these guys. But there is question marks with these guys, so I'm going to dive into all the details. So, first guy here, let's just get to it, Brees Hall. I love him. I love the talent. When I found out he was going to the Jets, was I excited? Absolutely not. So that was a big problem for me when I saw him go to the Jets. But let's talk about him talent-wise here, whether I should draft him or not, whether you should draft him or not, any type of hurdles that he may overcome, that type of thing. So I'm going to dive into everything, the nuts and bolts here. Now, when I look at the Jets draft here, they made some really good decisions. I mean, they had Elijah Moore last year, but they got Garrett Wilson in round one at wide receiver, which mm, I wonder about that. But they do need that They need that wide receiver one. He could be that, and again, could be a sleeper there for you. Brees Hall round two, and they had Michael Carter last year, who dra they drafted in the fourth round, who never got going. So that's a bit of a slap in the face there for Michael Carter, unfortunately, who I had as a sleeper, which I changed my mind now, because Brees Hall could be and should be a three-down workhorse running back. Bottom line, they got to run him like that if they want to win. They got to run their best player, and Brees Hall is that. Iowa State running back, 253 attempts last year, 1,472 yards on the ground with 20 touchdowns. The guy can catch the ball as well, 36 receptions, 302 yards, and three receiving touchdowns last year in college. Now, the year before looks similar to those stats. He was a workhorse, right? So 6'1", 220, just breaking it down for you. Again, round two draft. I watch tape on him. I like to study tape. Now, I talked to Tim the Ball guys. I was like, yeah, you watch highlights. You only watch the best tape. Yeah, but at least you get a good glimpse of what he looks like on tape, kind of his abilities. What I got out of it, very explosive, high top end speed, power, vision and speed so he's got that breakaway speed he's going to get those home run type games he's got that potential is he going to do it on the jets potentially we got to see what they do again them drafting a wide receiver in round one could help we got to see what happens with zach wilson this year i mean he's got he's got to step up now they went cornerback they went wide receiver they went defensive end running back and tight end uh really didn't address the o-line so much in the draft but i think based on talent Brees hall should really be explosive as long as he's got some holes to run in he's got that power and that top end speed to make some big plays now overall should you draft him if the value is right yeah for sure i haven't seen his adp now but you want to target Brees hall as your rb3 at least you know, as part of a robust RB committee, he is going to be the RB1 on the team. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be investing a second round pick. The Jets are going to use him. They want to win. They're going to use their best players. I like him. I'm going to try to target him as a running back three on my roster. That's kind of the goal. Maybe if, I, if he falls, maybe an RB4 as part of a robust RB strategy. But the talent is there. The youth is there. 
And if the Jets get their crap together this year, he could literally, guys, I'm telling you, this guy could literally be a top 10 running back. That's the type of ceiling we're talking about. That's the type of talent we're talking about. I am excited about Brees Hall this year. Target him. Look at him. The value should be there. Now, Michael Carter, I'm fading him completely now. But can he be a thorn? Possibly. Michael Carter last year led the Jets with attempts, 147 attempts, four touchdowns, only 4.3 yards per carry. They had Ty Johnson and a bunch of bottom feeders. Mike uh, Michael Carter couldn't get it done, even without Brees Hall there, 147 attempts. It wasn't a lot, but that tells me now that they're going to use Brees Hall and probably fade Michael Carter as a change of pace back or as a as just a backup, right? Uh, good depth for the Jets, good talent on the Jets, de- on the Jets. I like Brees Hall. Target him. All right, guys. Again, question marks. Is he's on the Jets? That's the only real question mark. I think he's going to get the volume though. Out of the three guys here, I think he's potential to get the most volume. Second guy here, out of Michigan State, second round two, uh, second round pick for the Seahawks. Let's talk about Kenneth Walker. I like Kenneth Walker. I think the talent is there. Studied some tape on him. Now, last year, another workhorse running back, 263 attempts, 1,636 yards. He had more yards on the ground than Brees Hall last year, 18 touchdowns, right? Had some receptions too, 13 receptions, uh, a touchdown there as well. 1,725 scrimmage yards for Kenneth Walker. This is exciting stuff, guys, all right? The volume is there. I studied some tape on him now. The thing that I like about him is that he cuts very well. Cuts, right? Changes direction very well. Nose for the end zone. Um, He's very crafty with his runs. He's got some speed if that's needed. Good vision, so he's finding the holes. Um, I think very capable of being a three-down workhorse running back. The problem with Kenneth Walker is a big one. That is Chris Carson. Now, Chris Carson's going in, what, a sixth, seventh year, fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh year. Um, now, I'm looking at Chris Carson coming off neck surgery. They drafted Kenneth Walker in the second round for a reason. Why they drafted him? Because I don't think they're really sold that Chris Carson is going to be fully healthy and he's going to be 100% coming back. Chris Carson's been kind of plagued with injuries throughout the years. You know, he's had kind of years to wow us, we're not wow. That, that's the problem with him. Last year was hurt. Uh, Rashad Penny came in, and Alex Collins kind of took the load there. 119 yards for Rashad Penny, 6.3 yards per carry, six touchdowns. Had a couple good games, but Penny's not that good. But here's the problem you're going to run with Kenneth Walker here. You've got the talent, you've got the ability, you've got everything you need in a three-down workhorse running back. The big question is, are the Seahawks going to run him as a three-down workhorse running back? That's my only doubt with the situation. Chris Carson's got to come in, get hurt again, or really just not be up to speed. I think Kenneth Walker definitely surpasses Rashad Penny. Penny's just not that good. Um, either way, when you draft Kenneth Walker, you got to make sure you get him for value as your RB3-4 and understand that it is going to be a committee approach. I feel a little more comfortable with Brees Hall getting that workload. I'm a little less comfortable with uh, Kenneth Walker getting that work, you know, workhorse load because I just think there's more talent with Chris Carson and Rashad Penny there and that RB by committee approach. Now, not to say that Kenneth Walker can't come out, explode, get a couple runs, and take that position. Obviously, every team wants what's best for them, and they're going to run the best possible running back, but there is a committee that's going to be an issue to begin with, so do not draft Kenneth Walker expecting for him to be the workhorse right off the bat. If he does take it, it may take several weeks, and we got to see a, a significant regression and a decline in Chris Carson's ability to perform and Rashad Penny, all right? So, committee approach, love the talent, love Kenneth Walker as a talent. If Chris Carson goes away, I definitely think he passes Rashad Penny, and there's some opportunity there, okay? Second round pick there out of Michigan State. The last guy here, this is an interesting one, got some backlash here, did a post on it because I'm excited about it, is Isaiah Spiller on the Chargers. Now, you guys are saying Austin Eckler. Let's talk about this logically here, okay? You know, Joe, Isaiah Spiller is going to be a backup to Eckler, and that's very possible, okay? Now, the problem is a lot of people are going to be drafting Austin Eckler in round one. You guys got to realize, okay, Isaiah Spiller, I know he's drafted in round four, so people are like, you know, he wasn't drafted in round two, one, we're okay, right? He's just going to be a backup, okay? Let's think about this for a second here. You're going to invest a first-round pick on Eckler, who, again, he's done, he's done well last year. The year before, not so much. <clears throat> he did well, so I got to give him props. 
in and around the attempts, he doesn't. Eckler's not a, a a big attempts guy. He just he just doesn't get it done on the attempts. I mean, two hundred and six, not bad. But I like those full workhorse running backs, especially if I'm investing a first round pick in them. Eckler's going to be that, especially in PPR. He had nine hundred and eleven rushing yards, twelve touchdowns. Again, we're talking Austin Eckler here. In comes Isaiah Spiller. Isaiah Spiller last year. 179 attempts, one, oh, just over 1,000 yards with 1,011, six rushing touchdowns, and he can receive the ball. He's a good receiver. I watched tape on him. He's out of Texas A&M, guys. Again, 6'1", 215. He's very confident. He runs hard. He carries people with him, right? He's a strong runner. I think that's that. he's a bit of a power back, right? He's, it's a power back that I think the Chargers need. So, you know, he's going to be a goal line guy. There's no doubt he's going to hoard away some rushing touchdowns. He's going to get worked in. He's going to steal volume. He's going to steal attempts. You know, Justin Jackson, Joshua Kelly couldn't get it done. Larry Roundtree through the years just didn't get it done. Isaiah Spiller, I think, is more talented definitely than all those three guys. Isaiah Spiller could potentially be a three-down workhorse running back. So, again, I want to take a look at the scenario here. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about Javante Williams for a second here. Javante Williams is listed as a top 10 running back by the consensus. Last year, 203 attempts. Melvin Gordon had 203 attempts. Melvin Gordon's in there. A lot of people are going to be investing a high draft capital in Javante Williams, okay? Let's talk about this. So you're basically brushing Melvin Gordon out. Think about this, okay? Drafting Javante Williams, he's set to be that workhorse back, right? Because, again, he's a little bit proven. He's he's had a year under his belt. Javante could run with that job, Melvin Gordon fading out. But if you guys remember, Melvin Gordon is actually better, okay? As much as I don't like Melvin Gordon, he's actually better than Austin Eckler, he was the starter over Austin Eckler for a year or two. He was the starter. If Eckler was better than Melvin Gordon, Eckler would have surpassed Melvin Gordon. He just never did. Melvin Gordon eventually left the team. Eckler finally got the starting job. Did okay. He's done well. Eckler's done well. He hasn't done phenomenal, right? Like, again, last year, 206 attempts, 16 games, 911 yards. Now, in the receiving game, he did well. 70 receptions, 647 receiving yards. Now, he did get a lot of touchdowns, which inflated his numbers, right? He had 12 touchdowns on the ground. And he had eight receiving touchdowns. Eckler got it done. He gets in the end zone. But this year, there's going to be a decline. Isaiah Spiller, right? They're going to use Isaiah Spiller in and around that goal line. They're going to work him in. He's a power back. I don't know how much he's going to get, but he can get that volume. So going back to Eckler, going back to Melvin Gordon and Javante, you know, people are drafting Javante second round, forgetting about Melvin Gordon, but Melvin Gordon could be a big thorn. But you guys are willing to, you know, draft Austin Eckler and forget about the younger, you know, stronger potential guy in Isaiah Spiller, you know, that's a tough one for me. What I get from this situation when I break it down and look at it, and again, I explain all this in 16-round drafts, which I'll tell you where to get Isaiah Spiller exactly. Still a little uh, relatively early here. You know, Isaiah Spiller is going to be pretty cheap to get. You're going to be stashing him, right? Because so many people are going to sleep on him because they're going to be drafting Eckler round one. So I'm thinking this is going to be a, a, an RB by committee, committee approach. I think Spiller gets some work. Again, if you look at it last year, you know, you look at a guy like Justin Jackson, 68 attempts, 364 yards, two touchdowns on the ground. Not as much of a workhorse potential as an Isaiah Spiller. Again, I think the Chargers are going to use him. They're going to play the better hand. Um, you know, Austin Eckler has gotten hurt before. He played, what, 16 games last year. I think he missed a game. Played 10 games the year before. Was a backup in 2017-2018 to Melvin Gordon. You know, and he was, uh, where was he drafted? He was drafted, I think he was a free agent, uh, Eckler. I don't think he was drafted relatively early as well. That's going back to 2017. It doesn't matter. What matters is right now, I think Spiller is going to be a thorn in the side. So where do you get Spiller? You get him for value. You get him later. You stash him for a potential to take that job, period. And it gives me enough information to fade Austin Eckler round one because I think Thil uh, Spiller will be uh, a bit of a threat. All right, guys? So I love the talent here. I'm not saying you got to invest a first, second round, third round pick on these guys. Brees Hall, I think, is going to be the highest out of the ADP on all these guys because he's got the lowest entry of barrier to take that RB1 spot. He should be the RB1 right off the bat. Kenneth Walker, a little more obstacles there with Chris Carson, depending on how he comes back from injury. And Isaiah Spiller could take that job uh, with Eckler. Again, Eckler was a backup for years, right? Had a good year last year, you know, He's done okay, uh, just doesn't get it done on the rushing. Just doesn't get it done on the rushing yards, okay? I, he hasn't had one 1,000-yard rushing season in his entire career. Gets it done in the receiving, but that's where Isaiah Spiller is going to be that one-two punch, right? He's going to be the guy on the ground, Eckler more in the receiving game. It's going to be interesting to see, but it is going to be a committee 
I'd rather take Isaiah Spiller as the value later. All right, guys, very simple. Now, there is no clear-cut path. There's no Najee Harris this year that I see right off the bat that pops out and jumps out to me, but Brees Hall could be that guy. There is some other running backs as well that, that are on my mind. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribed. I'll run that through uh, with you guys as well. Subscribe, thumbs up, and get that 60-round draft solution to crush your leagues, guys. Fantasy football is almost here. Let's get it. Talk soon.